Hi everyone, my name is Kavisha Vidhanapatirana and I'll be presenting our work titled Locus LiDAR based place recognition using spatial temporal higher order pooling. This work is done in collaboration with Data61 CSIRO and the Queensland University of Technology. Place recognition aims to associate input sensor data to a map or database of previously visited places. This task of global data association is essential to accurately close loops during simultaneous localization and mapping, and also to relocalize within a previously built map without a prior post estimate. Current solutions to this problem struggle to deal with viewpoint changes, especially during reverse revisits, and practical adverse conditions such as sensor occlusion. To tackle these challenges, we propose a novel global descriptor which operates on sequential 3D LiDAR point clouds. We decompose the scene into components and generate a descriptor which encodes the topological relationships and temporal consistency information of these components. This is an overview of our pipeline. First, the input point cloud is decomposed into a set of segments. For this set of segments, we obtain two sets of complementary features. The first feature, noted as FA, encodes the structural appearance of the segment. The second feature, noted as FB, encodes the topological relationships and temporal consistency of segments. These complementary features are then aggregated using second order pooling to obtain a fixed size scene descriptor, which is invariant to the order and number of segments. Finally, the power Euclidean nonlinear transform is applied to obtain a more discriminative scene representation, which is then flattened and normalized to obtain the global descriptor. Segments are generated by first removing the ground plane from the point cloud and then extracting Euclidean clusters of points. The number of segments M depends on the environment and the range of the sensor. The first segment feature, noted as FA, is obtained using a 3D CNN. For this, we use the pre-trained network provided by the authors of SegMap. This network encodes each segment into a 64-dimensional vector, which is capable of discriminating segments based on the structural appearance, while also being invariant to viewpoint. A complementary set of features, noted as FB, is obtained using two stages of feature pooling, spatial and temporal. Spatial feature pooling encodes the topological relationships of segments within a single frame. Temporal feature pooling encodes the temporal consistency of segments throughout a frame sequence. Topological relationships of segments within a frame are defined using a directed graph which represents each segment as a vertex. The edges of this graph represents the relationships between segments. This graph is constructed as a KNN graph where the segment neighbors are found by computing the minimum translational distance between the convex hulls of segments. We, com we use the quick hull algorithm for computing convex hulls. Given the graph encoding topological relationships for each segment SI, a spatial feature noted as phi is computed by pooling features along the edges of this graph. This essentially computes a weighted sum of the structural appearance features of the nearest segments to SI. The weights in this pooling is calculated using softmax of the MTD to ensure that closed segments have a higher weight. With the aim of encoding the temporal consistency of segments, we carry out a second stage of feature pooling over the segment correspondences between frames. Frame-to-frame -frame segment correspondence estimation is carried out as in algorithm 1. For each segment in the current frame, we obtain two sets of nearest neighbors from the previous frame 
using Euclidean and feature space distance respectively. The correspondence estimate is taken as a segment in the intersection of these sets, which minimizes both feature space and Euclidean space distance. Here we see a visualization of a sequence. The top half shows the extracted segments in random colors. The bottom half shows the temporal consistency score of each segment, where brighter colors indicate higher scores. Segments with high temporal consistency score are more likely, be, more likely to be repeatable upon revisits. Finally, the complementary feature FB is obtained as the average of the spatially and temporally pooled features. Given a set of segments and the two sets of complementary features, the scene level representation is obtained using second order pooling. For each segment, its second order feature is obtained using the outer products of its associated FA and FB features. The second order features of all segments are then aggregated using element wise max pooling to obtain a fixed size representation which is invariant to the number and order of segments. The power Euclidean nonlinear transform acts on this matrix by raising each of its singular values by a power of alpha to generate a more discriminative scene representation. We validate our method through evaluation on the Kitty Audiometry dataset using the pressure and recall curves and its scalar metrics, the maximum F1 score, and extended precision. First, we investigate the contributions of each component of our method on using the Kitty sequence 08. Inclusion of the power Euclidean transform after second order pooling shows a dramatic increase of 44.7% F1 max. Further investigating the influence of feature types, Table 1 shows that encoding complementary information leads to an increase in the final performance, where the best performance is obtained by incorporating both topological and temporal information. We compare our method against other state-of-the-art methods. We obtain the highest mean F1 max score on the evaluated sequences. Further, our method demonstrates a significant improvement in performance on the challenging sequence of 08, which consists of a number of reverse and orthogonal revisits, thereby demonstrating the robustness to viewpoint variations. The qualitative performance visualization of our method at the RP100 threshold shows that our method can retrieve true positives throughout a variety of environments and revisit types. We evaluate the robustness of our method against the state of the art on a variety of challenging scenarios which simulate real world adverse conditions. First, we evaluate the robustness to viewpoint changes by rotating each input point cloud by random angle above the z axis. The methods highlighted in bold in Table 3 show less than 1% performance difference, hence, demonstrating viewpoint invariance. This test aims to simulate occlusion of the LiDAR where the field of view of the sensor can be greatly reduced due to nearby dynamic objects or self-occlusion. We simulate sensor occlusion by removing all points which lie within a fixed sector about randomly selected azimuth. For occlusions of 30 degrees, our method shows the lowest drop in performance. We further extend the occlusion test to occlusion angles of up to 180 degrees. We note that in our method, the F1 max of sequences 00 and 05 remain above 80% even at occlusions of 180 degrees, where 50% of the point cloud is removed. Thank you.